hello guys welcome back to the channel and today we have another keyboard review it's been a while since i've posted a video and i mentioned this uh in my raffle draw with the 3000 sub celebration before that i'd be slowing down with keyboards this year because it's really really busy with work but hopefully i can still have time to bring out some good quality reviews that you people would enjoy all right so today we're starting off the series of mechanical keyboards with numpads because for the past year that i've been trying to get people into the mechanical keyboard hobby a lot of those non-mech enthusiasts would ask what good keyboard they can find and then i give them the options out there the ones that i've tried the ones that i love and most of the time they would be asking me if there's a keyboard with numpad because for a lot of people the numpad is very important though honestly I started with that ideology as well but later on in the game I found out that smaller keyboards were the ones that I like more again it's all preference at the end of the day um, and during those times there were not so many keyboards that you could recommend with the full layout and especially the ones with the numpads uh, last year the only one I built was I think the Keychron Q series they had a Q series with a numpad and that was okay it was good I really loved that keyboard uh, but come 2023, there are a lot more options coming out of the market right now. And we have three keyboards for you that we will be reviewing. And each keyboard with different specs, each keyboard with different price point, and each keyboard with uh, different thoughts that I'll be putting out in this channel. All right, so we start off with this one. This is the Thunder Robot K104. And as a disclaimer, this unit was sent over to me for review okay but yes this is a review unit it was sent over for me uh, to me for free but in no way will it affect my review but again at the end of the day do take note this is a very subjective subjective hobby all right so what is this keyboard it's a hundred percent layout keyboard okay the full specs are in the link i will send you the link all right in the review in the comment section all right but um important specifications is that it's a hundred percent full size layout keyboard uh it's plastic it has a plastic case it has plate mounted stabilizers pbt double shot keycaps hot swappable three and five pin compatible the one that i got comes with a red switch all right linear red switch and a cherry profile keycaps and uh basically that's it uh it's tray mounted standard nothing fancy the plate i think is steel it's either steel or aluminum but i think with the sound profile i think it's more of a steel plate all right it has rgb lighting all right and i really love the the side lighting here uh love that side lighting very subtle but very nice as well and it comes in at a very enticing price point this set for the whole set is sold at 2,399 pesos and although my first impression when I opened this was that oh boy this is a this is not one of your recent releases probably might be an quote-unquote outdated keyboard it doesn't have a detachable USB-C connection so you have your standard USB connection here um, the first impression I got what was that it looks nice. It looks okay. I love the colorway. I love the aesthetics of this keyboard. I love I love the height, the typing angle. For a mechanical keyboard, it's not too high, which is good for those just getting into the hobby. And um, honestly, the sound, uh, you be the judge. Here's the sound test of the stock. So right, uh, as expected, it does sound plasticky, a bit on the cheaper side, cheap, cheapest side of the keyboard. Uh, there's a lot of hollowness to it, some rattling on the stabilizers, again, which is expected. So this is a 2,399 peso keyboard for a full kit with switches and keycaps. I think that's a fair offer, all right? So... The question is, my question in mind is, would this keyboard 
be elevated if I mod it? And of course, the answer would be yes. When you mod the keyboards, most of the time, it does better. But the question is how far? How far can we bring this keyboard with simple modifications that are readily available? And I wasn't expecting much, but lo and behold, this is what it sounded modded. sounds really really nice right once that hollowness is gone once the stabilizers were tuned i am really impressed with this kit uh it sounds really nice and mind you i didn't even lube the switches as i felt that it's not worth lubing you'd be off switching it with an another set of keycaps so what did i do when i modded this keyboard so you can open up this keyboard for those of you who's going to get this unit to open up this keyboard, you have to remove first all of the switches, all of the keycaps, and access the screws inside. And mind you, there are a lot. I lost count. There are a lot of screws inside. And what I did was a simple case foam modification using this Poron case foam that I got over at Squishy Types. I will put in the link. And I really love this. I really love this. One of my favorite go-to mods when I want to eliminate the hollowness of the lowercase. And yes, there are a lot of materials. There are a lot of materials that you don't even have to pay for. You can cut out your rug. You can cut out your gym mat, all right? But um, this just makes life so simple for me. Just cut it to shape and then put it on the lowercase. Simple as that. And then you have to, of course, put holes for the standoffs to go to. But other than that, uh, I don't mind spending for this because it really works well. I love the sound profile after modding. And then after that, I just placed in two layers of tape mod. So the popular Tempest tape mod. And I tuned the stabilizers using my favorite uh, Zion Studios lubes. I uh, used the stabilizer lube. This is the XHTBDZ for the wires. And uh, the Zion Studios switch lube lubes for the housing. And I'm really impressed. Uh, I never thought that these stabilizers would go this far after balancing and tuning. Um, I love how it sounds. No rattle at all. Really good. Uh, so that's it. Just balance the wires. I did clip the feet. So balance the wires, clip the feet, and uh, put in the loops. And that, that was it. It was really good. All right. So... Yeah, that, that's how it sounded after modding. And <laughs> honestly, from 2399 price point, I think this keyboard would go head to head with those that sounds around 4,000, 5,000 peso price point, right? And finally, finally, uh, I switch and swap the switches to the Fecker Matches because I really think the Fecker Matches go well with this theme, with the color of the keyboard. And here is how it sounded. So, in conclusion, you have a 2,399 peso keyboard kit that comes with everything that you need. Yes, it's only wired. No wireless option. Yes, it's it has a bit outdated USB connection port. But um, it does have good keycaps. I measured the keycaps. It's 1.2 millimeters. Not the thickest out there, but it does feel and sound pretty solid for its price. I like how it feels. I like how it sounds. 
Um, the stabilizers are really good once you're able to tune and lube it. The sound is very good after modding. And yeah, that's it. Um, for $2,399, factor in the cost of your modding materials and your modding needs. Probably that's around a thousand peso more, depending on what you're going to use and buy. And then put in some switches. Maybe the total cost of the build would cost around 3,500, 4,500, what have you. Um, I think it's a good deal, still a good deal. Uh, who do I recommend this keyboard for? Definitely for beginners. So beginners going into the hobby who doesn't want to splurge yet on the 5,000, 8,000 peso price point. This keyboard might be for you, especially if you're looking for that numpad, all right? So that's my review of this keyboard. Do check it out. Thank you for sending me this review unit. Really enjoyed modding it. Haven't modded a budget board in a while as I've been spending much of my time with mid-tier to high-tier keyboards, but it's a good refresher to the hobby. It's a good experience nonetheless. I still enjoy it. So I think that's the beauty of this hobby, guys. Honestly, for me, if you ask me what's the best keyboard, uh, it's really hard to choose because honestly, I enjoy all of the keyboards that I'm using from the budget, most budget keyboards that I have to the most expensive ones. It's really an experience. Different experience, different sound profiles. I just love it. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this review. Stay tuned. I have two more keyboards with numpads up for review. The most popular Mons Geek M2 and I have another light cheek keyboard coming up. So see you on the next video.